This is probably one of the most common questions that homeowners ask when they're in the process of researching solar power options for their home. But the answer to this question isn't as straightforward as it might seem. In fact, to determine the correct number of solar panels, there's a number of factors that have to be considered, including how much energy your home is consuming, where you live, how much shading you have on your roof, what direction your roof faces, and what type of solar equipment you plan on using. Now, in today's video, I'm gonna be giving you a brief demonstration of how we use solar design software to determine exactly the correct number of solar panels for your home. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge. And for the past 12 years, I've been helping families achieve energy independence using clean, renewable energy. Now, if you're new to the Solar Surge channel, on Solar Surge, you're gonna find product reviews and comparisons of all the top solar panels and batteries and inverters, pretty much all the gear that goes into building a home solar power system. We also do short educational videos like today's video here, where I'm gonna be showing you how to determine the correct number of solar panels for your home. Now, any competent solar company should be using a good solar design software. And the software that we use here at Solar Surge is Aurora, which is still pretty much considered the, the top of the top in terms of accuracy and modeling. And so if I turn my screen share on here, I'm gonna show you how I would model a solar power system for an example customer. Now, the example that we're using here, this is a home just outside of Phoenix, Arizona, and this home has an average monthly electric bill of $180 per month. That's gonna be pretty much the minimum information that you're going to need in order to build a, a system design. Although ideally, you actually will have a full month by month breakdown. Let me just open this up here. Ideally, you have a full month by month breakdown of the exact kilowatt hour usage. Now, many electric companies on the electric bill, they'll give you a chart showing the previous 13 months where you can look at month by month exactly what the usage is. But even if you just have your monthly average bill, good software like Aurora will allow you to start there because it will have in its database what the electric rates are for your area. So it, it will know based on a $180 a month bill pretty accurately how many kilowatt hours per month usage that translates to. Uh, and that's important because that's the first thing that we have to establish is what is our production goal, right? If I take a step back here on the system, based on Aurora's database, it knows that $180 a month electric bill in this area of Arizona, where the provider, the, the electric utility is SRP, Salt River Project, that's gonna translate to an annual energy consumption of 19,062 kilowatt hours. So this is the first number we need to determine here. How much energy does this solar system need to produce for you? Now, once you have that, you can actually start modeling the system out and running production forecasts. Now, the nice thing I like about Aurora is it allows us to build an accurate 3D model of the home, including an irradiance mapping, meaning we can determine exactly how much sunlight is going to hit each surface of the roof. Even if you have trees around your, your house or other obstructions, Aurora's AI engine will calculate all of those factors. It'll discount for all those factors to allow us to get an, uh, an accurate energy production forecast. But the, the main factors that are gonna go into this are how many watts or what's the wattage of the solar panels that are on, on the roof? What is the orientation of the roof? How efficient is the orientation towards optimal sunlight? Are there gonna be any losses due to shading, right? Or if there's trees near the house, right? You're not gonna get full sun exposure, so you're gonna have shading losses there. And then finally, what type of inverter are you going to use? because there is gonna be a slight loss in the conversion of direct DC power, which comes off the solar cells, direct current, into alternating current, which is what our electric grid is wired for, what our homes are wired for. So there has to be a DC to AC conversion. It's called inversion uh, at some point in the system. And so how efficient is the, in the inverter that you're gonna be using? But again, as long as you're on a good modeling software, you'll be able to account for all of that. So with this particular example home, I can see that the south facing roof is, is wide open and this is where I receive the highest irradiance. And so I'm just gonna place some solar panels on the roof and run a production forecast. 
So for my panel, I'm going to go ahead and choose the, let's see, we'll use the Q-Cell. Let's go with the Q-Cell 400 watt panel. And I'm going to pair that with the Enphase IQ8M micro inverter. And then I'll just go ahead and fill up the roof face here. Okay. Again, this is one of the cleanest roofs that you can, you can hope to work with perfectly south facing with no vent pipes. And so Aurora has done the, uh, the optimal layout for me here. Now, once I have that, I can run my performance simulation. Now, again, when, when the software is running the performance simulation, it is already taking into account what the average irradiance is based on your zip code, any losses due to weather in your area based on your zip code, and then taking into account the pitch, the orientation and the shading factor on the roof, as well as any conversion losses in the solar equipment itself. And so once the simulation is complete, I'm able to actually pull up my production forecast. And based on this particular configuration, the system would produce 22,365 kilowatt hours per year, which is 117% offset based on the information I provided, the, the consumption information. So that would be a 31 solar panel system. Since this system is overshooting a little bit, I'm gonna take a few panels off. So I'm actually gonna take these bottom five panels off I'm going to rerun, rerun the simulation and see if that gets us closer to that 100% mark. If you just bear with it for a few seconds while it reruns, uh, reruns the algorithm. Okay. And so based on this slightly smaller system now with only 26 panels, puts me right at about that sweet spot of 100% coverage. This one's a 98% or in terms of production, 18,759 kilowatt hours. So for this particular home, I would recommend the 26 panel system that you have depicted here. But again, folks, this is not gonna be the same answer for every home. Each home is different in terms of consumption. Each home is different in terms of irradiance, You know how much sunlight actually hits the roof. Uh, and of course, where you're located is gonna have a big impact on that as well. The same, the same home in Phoenix, Arizona is gonna get a lot of sunlight compared to that, that same home, let's say in Chicago, Illinois, just cause the weather's different, a lot less sunlight in the Northern states, right? So you may need more solar panels, even if your home's same size home, same energy consumption. So anyway, folks, this has been a brief discussion of some of the factors that go into how to determine how many solar panels you need for your home. Uh, of course, if you're in the process of looking at solar power options for your home, uh, if you need to get a price quote, or maybe, maybe if you already have a quote and you need to get a comparison quote to make sure that you're getting the properly sized system and that you're getting good, fair, competitive pricing, uh, as always, you can feel free to reach out to us on the link below there. We'd be happy to set up a call with one of our solar experts and then get some pricing and some information over to you. Uh, of course, if you're getting good value from these videos that you watch on Solar Surge, make sure you give us a thumbs up uh, and go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well if you haven't done so already. That way, as we have new videos like this one coming out, it'll come up on your homepage and on your feed and you can stay up to date with us. Well, that pretty much does it for today's video. Uh, as always, I thank you for spending some more time with Solar Surge. I'm Joe Ordia here, as always, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. All right, I hope you're getting some great value from today's video content. Now, if you would like to have your product or your business or technology featured on the Solar Surge channel, feel free to reach out to us at the link below so you can set up a call with our media team to talk about your marketing goals and how Solar Surge can help you get there. Solar Surge is the leading online community in the US residential solar and energy storage space. And so if you'd like to get your product, business or technology in front of our audience, we can help you do that. Uh, again, feel free to reach out to our media team at the link below or email media at solarsurge.net.